thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. Welcome to another edition of Blooms for You from my Vanda Denisoniana and myself. So good to have you here. I look forward to showing you what has been in bloom, whose name came up on the list to dedicate the blooms to as a thank you. I'm going to do a little bit of deja vu and repeat myself because these blooms are still pretty gorgeous. I've had some ant damage right here, but my Vanda Spike still blooms for all of you that are watching this video to say thank you for your time and thank you for being here. Know that you are very much appreciated. If it is your first time here, please let me know that you're here. Leave me a comment below. I will put you also on my list. And eventually there will be a bloom in the Ninja Orchids collection for you. And if you've been here a while but have never commented, same thing applies. Let me know you're here. I cannot thank you personally if I don't know that you're here. Either way, welcome. Let's go and see what's been in bloom, still is in bloom. I have some people to thank. Mirme Catavola, Francis Fox. That is two F's right in there. F for Francis, F for Fox. It's missing one more F, which would be friend. That makes F, F, F. Three F's, perfect. Fernando Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. Yes, I have an IOU to fulfill from last year to say thank you so very, very much for supporting me on my channel from Jump Street. You put up with a lot of nonsense, from the moment you heard that I had my channel. You put up with a lot of sound issues, camera issues, distortion issues, the whole nine yards, everything that you can imagine with a new channel, you put up with it. And you've watched every single one of my videos. You've commented on every single one of my videos. You've commented on every single community post since they've come up. Lady, I don't know how you do it, but I owe you not only a better blooming of my Francis Fox as opposed to last year, I've got two more to give to you. And there's only one way that I can consider who to dedicate my first blooming of my Francis Fox sunrise. And that is to you, Fernanda. Nothing meant to orchids and succulents. Because you know, F, 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 three blooms, F, 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 fabulous friend Fernanda, all of that. I just think it's perfect. And I feel so much better now being able to get three blooms to you that are in great condition. Even though it looks like the orchid is a little bit stressed in the back here, these are all the old growths. She is finally established and this is her first blooming ever. Of which I'm super proud. I'm very, very happy that I have this one, considering that this one was the one I wanted to replace with another one that isn't doing so well. Hmm. I have so many cars on idle beyond the hedge, I'm telling you. I hope I can edit the noise pollution out. Back to you, Fernanda. All right, three blooms. This one here has already been opened like weeks. So it might look a little bit tired, but it's not, it's not too shabby, is it? These two, I wanted to wait until they were all open. Thankfully, the first one didn't fade, but then at least I would have two gorgeous blooms to give to you, Fernanda. So these opened about three days ago. This bloom actually feels quite solid, so I'm not understanding why this little creature is such a floppy, floppy thing. But it would appear that Francis foxes are beautiful in their color, beautiful in their lip, details, but floppy floppy when it comes to the sepals. Never mind. It's a gorgeous display of oranges, pinks, yellows. I love it. And it smells delicious, of course. The typical Cattleya fragrance. There's nothing exceptionally different about this one, but a floral Cattleya fragrance. Mine isn't that strong, which is fine, but it's there. So there's hope for next year. F, 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 thank you for everything. Your support on the Care Collabs as well. Can't forget to mention that. Amazing, I really, really appreciate you. Eres mi vecina más favorita del mundo, la verdad. Obrigado, muito obrigado. Elaine Riley. 
my three blooms of Dendrobium and Osmum go to you. I wish I had 30. <laughs> we do get greedy as orchid growers sometimes. I do wish I had 30, but my goodness for this orchid to have come so far that I'm allowing it to bloom with these three blooms. I wanted to say thank you to you via these Dendrobium and Osmum blooms for your support on my channel as well, for your emails and our correspondence, all that good stuff. I really appreciate the communication and I'm hoping that your orchids are doing exactly as they are supposed to do this time of year and giving you much joy and excitement and discoveries of new growths and buds and spikes this time of year. Personally, standing in front of this orchid, I have to tell you I'm really hungry. I am a sweet tooth and all I can think of is raspberry pavlova or eaten mess, depending on how you call it. I like the raspberry pavlova thing, but pavlova can be so many different flavors, but for me, it's the raspberry pavlova that comes through on the fragrance of this gorgeous dendrobium anosmum. When I got this anosmum a few years ago, I know she doesn't look like much, what on earth went wrong? That's another story that's not for today, but she actually started to have some buds on her first cane ever, but I nipped those buds off in order to give the orchid the opportunity to recover and grow. Recovered she has, growing is the next step. But those buds themselves already had this super sweet, pungent fragrance of meringue and raspberry. Divine, delicious, can't say much more about it. And as I said, the longer I stand here, I'm about to go and find me some frozen raspberries. And if I can't do the meringue, never mind. Frozen raspberries, a little bit of sugar, maybe a hint of cinnamon, but that's for flavor that is not included in the fragrance of this orchid. But I'm telling you, delicious. All in all together, delicious. Elaine Riley, you are very much appreciated. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how your orchids are doing and never forget the NINJA acronym. Never in need, just ask. Thank you for your support, Elaine. Talonopsis cornus servi, variety Chatelidae. Now, I have always called her Lady Chatelain, but I think I'm going to change my little synonym for her to Cheeky. This has got to be the cheekiest looking orchid bloom that I have in my collection, unless I find a first time bloomer that can surpass this. I have two blooms and then we'll get into the face of this orchid. Two blooms as a thank you to Parasar Das and Alifa Hossein. These two blooms, I to say thank you to both of you for your support here on my channel. Just make sure the leaves don't get too hot. Summer bloomers can take quite a bit of light, but we don't want to overdo it, especially if there's water in the leaves that can act like a lens and heat up pretty quickly. So my little Cornusurvi variety Chatela Day or variety Cheeky, according to me. I don't know if you see this. You can see the face <laughs> with like the hard hat of a construction site on the top. The two eyes, I hope the viewfinder is picking this up. Two eyes and then a very broad smile. Having a great time out here in southern Spain. Para Sardas and Alifa Hossein, I want to say thank you so very, very much. Supporting my channel, for subscribing and for leaving your comments. I hope that you're both doing well. My variety Chatela Day here, aka Tiki. Two blooms and these bloom for you. I still have a few more coming and this orchid smells of wax paper. There's nothing really floral about it just yet. These blooms are open now probably three days but I'm hoping to get a little bit more of a hint of a spicy candy in the background as a note but for now it's wax paper and that's exactly also how they feel texture wise. Very waxy, very glossy, as you can see. Love this orchid, very vigorous. She is a non-fuss summer bloomer that is absolutely enjoying the setup of Lekka and self-watering. Never had an issue with her. So I'm very, very pleased that she's blooming again for Parasar Das and Alifa Hossein. Thank you to both of you.
Renanthera citrina. We have come indoors so that I can show these blooms without the wind bopping around too much or, or the sun reflecting too much of the color. I hope that this is clear and shot. It's looking wonderful through my viewfinder. And there are 25 blooms on this orchid. Where they say about seven to nine per spike. Yes, I know, I show off. <laughs> but this gives me the opportunity to dedicate this spike to a lot, a lot of viewers that have been watching my videos and commenting in the comments section. So to say a massive thank you to all of you, Urban Glamping, CBR6F2, Joan Anderson, Iona Tanase, Orchids and Me, and Malia Flotorp. All of you have been so kind, so supportive. You've been watching, you've been commenting, you've subscribed. Thank you so very, very much. And my 25 blooms of my Renanthera Citrina go to you. And I'm really happy to be able to do so because yes, I am really pleased with this blooming. And she is lasting a long, long time. The last time we saw her was on a care collab that I did together with Orchids and Finbos. And these buds had not opened yet. But now they're all here. I am missing two blooms. Yes, I know. Petty things, huh? Could have been 27. I'm having some ant issues. And before I can get rid of the ants, they can take out the blooms. And as you can see, I'm chasing one around now. Goodness me, they're busy this year. Anyway, it could have been 27, but hey, 25. Let's not get too picky here. And then just enjoy these gorgeous blooms. What a spike. And I'm very proud of myself because I actually managed to let it bloom out and didn't break anything. <laughs> it's always an achievement with something like this. But yeah, to Urban Glamping, CBR6F2, Joan Anderson, Iona Tanase, Orchids and Me, and Maria Flotorp, you are so very much appreciated. I hope that you're all doing really well and that when you see this video that you approve of my choice as a thank you to you via the blooms of my Renanthera citrina. This is my pretty, pretty, pretty Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex. If you can read the label in the back there, it is wrong. It is not Tabasuco as I thought for many years prior to having my channel, but it is Tabasco Tex. And Eunice Galligagan, here is my first bloom of the season for my Tabasco Tex for you. I want to say thank you as well to you for your support here on my channel. It's so very much appreciated. And it gives me great pleasure to see Tabasco Tex back in bloom, looking fabulous and smelling divine. Tabasco, clearly somebody thought about the name because there is a spiciness to this bloom. There's a fragrance that is very sweet. But if you were to ever, for example, have a hot chili sweet sauce, maybe from the Chinese or something, there is an, a perfume of the sweetness and then you can get the kick of the heat in that sauce when you smell it. That's what my little Tabasco Tex smells like. Busy, busy orchid. We're going to have another bloom, not quite open yet, but I'll feature that in the next bloom for you video. And this one here is for Eunice Kali Gagan. Very gorgeous. We have more buds to come as well. And we've got roots starting to grow on top of everything else and a second spike. So I was a bit concerned a few months back when it absorbed its older spike, just took it completely out, went yellow, that was it. And I thought, well, we're not gonna get any blooms from Tabasco Tech this year, but here we are. <laughs> New spike came really fast and the bud opened relatively quickly as well. So Eunice Kaligagan, thank you so much for being here on my channel for supporting Ninja Orchids. I really, really appreciate it and I hope that you are doing well in your part of the world. After three years of this orchid situated as a centerpiece on my patio table on the east side, winter, summer, rain, cold, whatever it is, finally this orchid opened and it was sold to me as Maxillaria tenerfolia. 
Well, before we get into all of that, Lenium, my one bloom of my Maxillaria tenuifolia, blooms for you. And we're going to get closer, but I wanted to talk about what was going on here and why I believed it was mislabeled. Every Maxillaria tenuifolia that I have seen has bigger bulbs than these. They are not as yellow as these. They are a darker green. They're not sort of a oversized grape or large olive size, but you know, at least three times the size of these little pseudobulbs. And the rhizome is also so much more spread out in between each new growth. So it was quite a large plant when I got it, but it has tripled in size since I got it and it's not as fast a grower. So in my head, I'm like going, nope, this is not a tenuifolia, no big deal, whatever it is, it'll bloom eventually, I hope, and then we can identify it. Recently, ta-da, it opened one bloom. One, the orchid isn't small, one bloom. <laughs> I was really, really pleased. So I went straight to the Google, got to the Google out, and I said, all maxillaria blooms. Type that into the search to find the one that I have right here. And it turns out it is a maxillaria tenuifolia, and she smells like all the descriptions of the tenuifolia that I have heard over the years on the internet. For me, she smells like coconut macaroons. I don't get the Malibu. So from the variety of this being a short rhizomed Maxillaria tenuifolium, maybe the fragrance differs as well. It's possible she's just a first time bloomer, also a thing, but it is a very, very gorgeous fragrance. And thank you very much to plants and other things as well for bringing that to my attention that there are short rhizomed tenuifolias out there. So when I then did get my Google out and I saw this style of orchid as Maxillaria tenuifolia with exactly these blooms, based on what plants and other things already put the nugget into my head, I knew I had a tenuifolia and I take it all back, class an orchid in, I apologize. This is a tenuifolia, you were right, I was wrong. So I'm really glad, Lenium, that I can give you my first ever Maxillaria tenuifolia bloom to say thank you very much to you for supporting my channel, for being here and for participating the way that you do. I really very much appreciate it. And I would love to show you more of the bloom because I'm in a little bit in two minds. First of all, eh, what is that size? She's not large, but okay, smaller pseudobulbs. We don't expect larger blooms than the more commonly known tenuifolia. She's about three, maybe four centimeters across, not more. And then the petals are folded in and that's how they stay. That was new to me. I thought they would open. But what do I know? This is my first tenuifolia bloom. But what I've noticed on the internet, what I've read about is that is how they are. So this is a perfectly formed tenuifolia bloom. And I have to say, I love the African connotations here of the patterning. This is either so giraffe or so leopard, especially back here. It's like the giraffe pattern. Love it. It's not a shouty bloom, but it is a bloom and it is finally, finally, blooming size, which makes me super pleased. The Nayum, I hope that everything is going well. I hope that you're doing well. And I really want to say thank you ever so much once again for your support here on Ninja Orchids. So I always call this leopard yawn, but thanks to Todd's Tropicals, I believe, I believe that this is a van der Suavis crossed with van der Cristata. But I call it leopard yawn because I think that the colorations of these blooms make it relatively obvious as to why leopard yawn. Again, very African theme going on here. That's fine by me. I wish the temperatures would match the theme. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly cold in Southern Spain at the moment, but it is a very, very mild spring that we've had so far. Anyway, I digress. The spike, which is my third, very chuffed with that. The third spike of my Vanda Leopard Yon. I would like to dedicate those blooms to Pauli Chow and B. Razvan. 
So the two of you, I would like to also extend my massive thank yous to the both of you for your support on my channel. Subscribing, viewing, commenting, all that good stuff, everything that helps the channel. I really appreciate it. And your feedback is also always very constructive. And thank you so very much for that. So yeah, I still have a bud to open, but these can fade in the intensity of their blooms very quickly with the higher light coming and reflecting off the walls. So I wanted to get this spike nice and clean, free of ants. Little update on the seed pod, it's doing great. Still got that going. So there's that. But yes, Polly Chow and B. Razvan. This spike of my Van der Leppardion blooms for you and she smells gorgeous. She has a very, very strong, sweet fragrance. When you say sweet, it's the same thing as with a Cattleya. There's nothing exceptional about this fragrance, no deeper notes. It's just a very pleasant floral fragrance. And I'm looking forward to these blooms lasting a little bit longer because it seems like the ant colonies, despite the fact that they're still busy, they are not piling up and around the blooms. So these are going to last quite some time and I hope to be able to feature them in future videos before they fade. Poli Chao and B. Razvan, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Area Hyacinthoides is going absolutely nuts. But for Leonard H, I have one spike open. And despite our conditions today, I have to film it because otherwise I won't be seeing it as pristine. There is no point in me waiting for all the other spikes to open. Look at this. There's even one tucked into the growth back in here. I hope you can see that. There's more coming here. Just keep turning her around. There's one there. One growth has two on it. Yeah, but Area Hyacinthoides has a habit of not having very long lasting blooms. And you can see how windy it is outside today. That's why we're on the east side. No sun. At this point in time, I can put on this orchid because everything else is just blowing a gale. But I needed to get this filmed so that you can see it while it is still perfect. Look at that. Leonard H. My area hyacinthoides is now throwing another spike out in full bloom. I dedicate this to you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. Very much appreciated as well. She is not fragrant, unfortunately, but then again, maybe fortunately. I have been told by Michael that um, if hyacinthoides were to be fragrant, she would reek horribly. And uh, who wants that? I bought her back in the day because I thought hyacinthoides, I love the smell of hyacinths. Turns out had nothing to do with it. And they were considering the blooms to be the reference to the hyacinths. That's why hyacinthoides, but isn't that gorgeous? The plant itself doesn't look too hip because I've got humidity issues, lack thereof. But she's okay when she throws out blooms like this. This is the biggest spike count that I have ever had on this orchid and I've never actually had two coming out of one single growth. But that is for another video right now. Leonard H, this spike of my area hyacinthoides, she blooms for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support here on my channel. I turned her around just to say goodbye to everybody. These are the cleanest and prettiest blooms. They smell beautifully like lemon candy, very sweet, sugary, divine. When they first opened, there was hardly anything to detect, but now we are in full fragrance mode. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Once again, let me know that you're here. Leave me a comment below and I will definitely put you on the list as well for a bloom dedication in the future. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.